Genetic diseases are caused by defects in our genome. There are mutations that occur within our DNA. Uh, a point mutation is one example in which an adenine gets swapped out for thymine and our own genome is massive. It is about three billion base pairs along and all it takes is one little point mutation, one little mistake when we're copying DNA or in the process of meiosis for us to end up with something that can potentially be catastrophic. And while this is uh, devastating and the diseases that we see as a result of this are terrible, um, at the same time, it is the source of variety and adaptation for life. It is what has allowed us to evolve from single-celled organisms into these multicellular organisms that we are today. So uh, point mutations in the DNA and gene shuffling can be beneficial, but they can also be very detrimental to the health of a person, for instance. And so that is the root cause of genetic diseases. And what happens in some patients, and to have a story, I'm gonna talk about a disease called mucopolysaccharidosis, MPS. And mucopolysaccharidosis is caused by a point mutation in DNA. And so the issue here is that we have one of our base pairs switched. And because that base pair is switched, if we recall the um, fundamental dogma of biology, we have DNA, which is transcribed into RNA, which is translated into proteins. And proteins are things like enzymes. And, and so what happens here is that we have this mutation occurring within our DNA which will manifest in the RNA after the DNA is, is transcribed. And then because the RNA now contains this incorrect base pair, it will grab the incorrect transfer RNA, which will have a bad amino acid. And the ultimate uh, manifestation or result of this is that the protein, the final protein that gets created will still get created, but it will have a defect in it. And we might have something such as a hydrophobic region getting turned into a hydrophilic region, and this will change the entire structure and function of this protein. This very carefully evolved protein will no longer serve its original purpose. And so in the case of MPS, there's something called beta-glucuronidase, which is a mouthful, but um, for sake of illustration, I have a picture here, which describes the structure of these proteins. and what we can see here is that we've got some alpha helices uh, and beta sheets. So these proteins take on very complicated and nuanced shapes that we need very sophisticated computers to even be able to model. Um, but for the sake of this, I have this illustration here to see how complicated these things are and how fragile they can be also to little point mutations. And so the question that we come across when we're working in clinics and we have patients who have rare genetic diseases is what do you do? How do we treat these people? And one solution is enzyme replacement therapy. And so if for sake of argument, we assume that this molecule I have driven uh, drawn here to the right uh, is beta glucuronidase, we can essentially just give the patients the enzyme that they are not able to create on their own. And while they are still able to create it, it's a defective version. It doesn't do its ultimate purpose or its intended use. And um, so this is one valid method of doing it. Now, uh, the it's, it's, very, it's a lot easier said than done. Um, some of my early uh, career experience was at uh, pharmaceutical companies where they worked really hard at making these enzymes and making and scaling up the production processes and the batch reactors and uh, starting with little flasks and moving up and checking the quality and making sure you've got clonality in your cell lines and all the FDA uh, requirements in order to make these therapies at a therapeutic scale, which is sometimes very enormous. Um, but the other issue after you've made these uh, proteins uh, is that they are, even if you've made them correctly, they are still very fragile. And so 
Um, that is where you have big companies like Ultragenics Pharmaceutical or Biomarin who will dedicate a lot of resources and R&D to determine how to best manufacture proteins, what proteins are most effective, and how do you store and uh, keep these proteins intact so that after they've been manufactured, they can make it all the way to a patient and still have potency. Because at the end of the day, our goal here is to get the correct form of the protein into the patient who has the genetic disease, who can't make this protein on their own, and um, this is to provide a therapeutic effect for them. And so this, these, in a nutshell, that is what is going on here. It is a lot more complicated and a lot more expensive than that. But um, yeah, I think this is kind of a, a good introduction to enzyme replacement therapy, as well as the root cause of many uh, genetic diseases. I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.